Hello, everybody. Welcome to our number number two in our Telescope Talk Hangout. My name is Tony Darnell. I work at DeepAstronomy.com. And with me are my guests today. We're going to be talking about the best first telescope. And before I get started, I just want to give you guys a little introduction into this series. Since this is only the second one we've gotten, uh, we've, we've gotten into where the goal of this Hangout series is to try and give you a resource for getting introduced into the wonderful hobby of amateur astronomy. It is a great hobby, but it can also be very expensive if you, uh, if you like all hobbies can. I mean, really, I've saw, I knew a guy who was into model trains and spent more than I think I made in a year on model trains. So, you know, hobbies can be quite expensive, but they don't have to be. And we want to be a resource for you to give you the best advice and take some lessons learned from th from our experience as being amateur astronomers for well over, uh, in my case, over 30 years, and in my, my co-host case, even longer than that. So we're going to hopefully give you guys a decent introduction into the wonderful hobby of amateur astronomy, and we're going to take it in bites. Today, yes, last week, we talked about getting started. What, what are some general things you could do to just acquaint yourself with the hobby of amateur astronomy? And today we're going to talk about answering the question I get more than anything else after 10 years of doing YouTube videos, and that is, hey, Tony, I'm getting ready to buy a telescope. What should I get? And that's what we're going to talk about today. We're going to try and answer that question. And to do that, uh, I am going. I am joined by my, my co-hosts, uh, where we are hopefully next week going to have a better uh, layout than this. But right now I have uh, Adam Synergy. He is from the unseenpodcast.com. At Adam Synergy Smith. I mean, I should have put Synergy in quotes. What, by the way, Adam, what is that from? What is that about? It's just a silly name I made up to amuse myself, Tony. Oh, did it, does it amuse you? Yes, especially <laughs> when people ask, people ask me if it's my real name. Well, it has a nice still, it has a nice flow to it, doesn't it? Adam Synergy. Yeah, I mean, it kind of still cool. amuses me five yeah. years later. Ah, uh, good. So yes, uh, Adam Adam Smith. He runs the he runs a good podcast, and he just recently did a, did one that had Fraser Kane in it, didn't you? You just finished one. We up. did. We did. Available for download at all good uh, podcasting places. Now you are taking hiatus from that until September, right? Yeah, we are now. Oh, okay. Yeah. All right, but uh, definitely check it out, folks. Uh, I'm going to join him on one of them, I think, uh, at some point, right, Adam? Is that, yeah, I'll be on yeah. there uh, yeah. to talk a little bit, and help, help. Uh, 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 see, I've never been on a podcast like that before, so it'll be fun to see. Um, okay, so also joining me is, and he's got a camera this time, is John Suffle. Now, <laughs> John, this camera angle is weird. Okay, can you see yourself? Do you see that you've got like oh, half yes. of your face yeah. in? Okay. So we are getting, uh, let me, I'm going to have to do some adjustments here because uh, that's not all entirely your fault. But let me put this in. Let me get rid of that. And there are some things I can do, I think, to, yeah, if I just pull this out and get rid of some of the cropping, I think I can do a better job of getting you in this frame. I'm doing it all now because I didn't get a chance to do it before. So let's, there we go. We cut out that part. There's John. So there's John Suffle. Uh, also, um, also a, uh, you guys are both located in the um, UK, right? That's right. Yeah. yeah. And you've been amateur. So you guys have been doing this for quite a while. And uh, one of the things I'm very happy to be able to do with this is to um, bring, get you guys experience uh, from in our hangouts as well. So I think that what the three of us can do together is really great. And I also have, um, I also have uh, our first guest. Her name is is Helen Reddy, and she it reads. Uh, Reed, sorry. Yeah, <laughs> what was Helen that? A, is somebody that is, I know that was a total that was a total <laughs> slip of the tongue. <laughs> and I even put it down in your lower. Part. <laughs> oh my God! Spell it again. So I'm just gonna fix it right now. Spell spell it again for me. It's R E A D. R E A D. Read. Okay. Let me just. Where is that? Yeah. All right. There we go. Ready. I can't believe I did that. I even spell. If I were talking about Helen Ready, though, it would have been wrong for that as well. So Helen Reed, uh, she is actually in Vermont. She's in the U.S. here with me. So uh, welcome, Helen. And <coughs> and you you are going to tell us uh, your story about you've not too in the in the not too distant past. You have. Um, you have purchased your first telescope. And so we're going to hear your story. We're going to talk a little bit about 
what you went through, some of the things that you, uh, uh, what helped you, what hurt you, what you like about your telescope, what you don't like about your telescope. So thank you for joining us. All right, so let's go ahead and and, uh, and dive in. The um, Most of you, if you've been on these Hangouts before, it should be old hat. Um, we, I have got the, uh, I, I am, I think, broadcasting on four different platforms, YouTube, uh, Facebook, and uh, Twitch, and Periscope. And I am looking at the live chat on Twitch and uh, YouTube right now. So please, uh, I hope that you guys will... Um, uh, it, ask us questions and, and interact with us because we're here for you. I want to be able to answer your questions once and for all that I've been getting for 10 years uh, on amateur astronomy. And also I should point out that uh, if you are watching this after it's live, after we've already put it out, then we, we're reading the comments. John, Adam, and I are all reading the comments and we'll try to answer your questions uh, as, as they come up on the comment section after if you, if you couldn't watch this live. Okay, guys, so uh, let's see. Telescopes, your first one. We want to try and answer the question, why, you know, what should I buy? I've never been in this before. I don't know what telescope I want. Adam, let me start with you. Um, what, well, should we tell our stories first about why our very first telescope and then go into that question? What do you think? Yeah, if you can do, Tony. All right. Why don't you I, why don't you Adam tell us what you went through? What was your first telescope? Was it the one you wanted? Were you confused by any of it? By any of that stuff? My my very first telescope was a child's telescope. The kind of thing that you buy in a supermarket that I would definitely recommend people do not buy because it was a complete piece of rubbish. Are you talking about just any uh, telescope in any department store? Well, no. You can get some good telescopes now in department stores. But generally, the small ones that come in a box that say high magnification, you know, and it's just... That's it, a big red flag, isn't kids. it? We talked about that a little bit last week. Um, yeah. Okay, but did... So you bought, you bought a, a, a department store telescope. Did you like it very much? I didn't buy it. I was given it. I would never buy such a thing. Sorry, I meant that you. I was, yeah, you were given it. So, okay. I was I was given it as a as a child, and I tried and tried and tried to look at things in the night sky with it, and it didn't work. So, if you do want to buy a telescope, you're going to have to spend a reasonable amount of money. I'm not talking about thousands of dollars or thousands of pounds, but you're going to have to make a fairly significant investment in something that's got yeah, okay. decent optics i agree with that a lot and we're going to talk about a price point a good price point here in a bit but uh john tell us your story what was your first scope like um well it sounds pretty much the same as um sony's it was a load it was a, it was a toy basically um with this tabletop um tripod and a mount that was um made out of well some people here call it shit iron. Um, <laughs> <coughs> it was loose in the mount continuously, so tightened it up more, tightened it up more, and the mount broke. It snapped in two. Um, but I took it, I, I, well, looking out my bedroom uh, window one day, one night, um, looking at bright stars, and one of these stars was Saturn. This turned out to be Saturn, and it was good enough just to just to make out the, the uh, rings and well that kind of really helps get me interested in the game so even though it wasn't the best quality you were able to see something with it yes okay. yeah and, and as um adam said it's something that i would not suggest anybody buy Right. And that's, I mean, Nowadays. we can't really help that we, You know, if you get, if you're, if you're, you know, a lot of people mean, well, they want to buy a gift. They know you're scientifically precocious and that you might enjoy a telescope. And so they go out and they buy one, uh, without really knowing what it is they're getting. So it's, um, it's, you know, I, I, there's really not a whole lot you can do about that, but if you did have your own, well, you might even get a chance here using this advice that you learned here today to talk about 
saying specifically, if you want to get me a telescope, here's what I'd like to get, and here's about what it would, what you could expect to pay. So you guys' experiences wasn't that great, it sounds like. I mean, John, you were able to salvage it by still being able to get something seen, but uh, oh, yeah, uh, yeah. So you you at least got something out of it. My first experience with a telescope, I, as I as I mentioned last week, was I didn't have to buy it. I couldn't afford to buy one. And when I was a teenager, I always wanted one, but my family never had enough money to buy <clears> one. <throat> And so when I joined, when I was in high school, my science teacher uh, had a bunch in the in the after school program of the planetarium where I worked, and one of them was a Criterion or a six inch Newtonian that I got to use, and it was very low power, very simple to use, and I learned to what to view things on in that telescope. So I had a really great experience, and I went from that telescope to many, many, many more. But um, that was my first telescope experience, and I didn't buy one until. I actually started working in a telescope store uh, in Boulder, Colorado in the early 1980s, and that's when I actually started buying telescopes like crazy. And the telescopes I bought came from people who didn't know what they were buying and would end up buying something really expensive that they didn't know how to use, and they would end up returning it because it was too complicated. So I would buy it back at a pretty <laughs> decent price. So I know that sounds a uh, little... little um, uh, um, I don't want to say unscrupulous because I uh, we were up front about what they were buying. It's just that they wouldn't listen to the advice and got something they didn't really want and brought it back anyway. So I got a lot of good telescope deals as a result as a result of that. So my first experience was pretty good. But if if you and and I'm going to have you guys chime in here, how would you answer the question, what telescope should I buy? How would you guys if somebody approached you, Adam, I'll start with you. If somebody approached you, what would you say to them an answer to that question i would ask what do you want to look at that's right and they say i want to look at everything i want to look at stars and planets and galaxies i want to look at all of it yeah well there are different kinds of telescopes and different telescopes are better at looking at different things you can get some uh, really good refractor telescopes that are good at looking at the moon looking at uh, the planets in the solar system. But if you want to look at uh, deep sky images, very faint objects like planetary nebula, things like that, you need uh, a bigger reflector telescope. You need... Oh. I just wanted... You, you brought up the one point I wanted to talk about just a little bit, and that is, that's not an easy question to answer. There is no... Let me start by saying this up top. There is no such thing as a perfect telescope for everything. No one telescope is going to give you great views of everything. So you need to prioritize. Would you would agree, Adam and John? Oh, totally. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Okay, so for... Yeah. And the reason we're going to go into this when we talk about refractors versus reflectors next week, but no single telescope is ever going to be the, the end-all and be-all of a... of a... Uh, of everything you ever want to do. You're going to have to decide what's most important. So my response back would be well okay you have to pick you can't see you can't you can't view everything with one telescope so would you rather look at these planets and the detail of, of Saturn and the, or, and the and the rings or the bands of Jupiter and its moons or would you rather see the Orion Nebula and the star forming regions there or the crab Nebula or some other very dim very diffuse objects uh, and I would make them answer that question. So before you buy any telescope, I would ask your first one. This is, and you're only buying one. Then what would you like to most see with it? Is there anything else you guys would do if someone approached you with that question, John? What about you? Um, yeah, I agree. The, the, like, um, no, uh, one telescope will do everything perfectly. Um, if you want to look at the moon. Any any telescope will um, give you image, good images of the moon, whether it's a refractor That's or true. reflector. That's true. The moon is is really good, uh, no matter what. In, in fact, we'll talk about the special ways to, to look at the moon in just a minute. But the uh, um, uh, Raptor Seven Twelve on on uh, uh, Twitch is commenting. First scope I had was a Celestron. Astromaster 130. We're going to talk about some of these different ones here in just a sec, but uh, that's a good scope. That's a good scope, Raptor. So thanks for watching on Twitch. Um, so w in addition, so in addition to not having the um, uh, a satisfactory answer to "I want to see everything," 
if you since you have to choose, guys, let me get your opinion on this. And Hel and Helen, I'm gonna I'm gonna get you in on this in just a quick second because I want you to tell your story. But I want I want to get some groundwork laid here for this one question. Which do you feel if a person doesn't know, they just say I want to see everything. I want to see planets, stars, um, nebulae, galaxies. They don't really know. Would would you kind of pick for them? What do you think they would get the most out of? as a beginner with which of these objects do you think they would get more out of looking at the planets or do you think they would enjoy the deep sky um the deep sky views uh, of a wide field telescope what do you guys what's your hunch which would you advise someone to to get into first planets are, are a lot easier to image it's a lot easier to start off in the solar system. Deep sky imaging is is more difficult. So the planet, you'd say the planets then getting them started on that. What about you, John? Well, there's only a, um, a small number of planets to choose from, really. Um, you can go up to um, Saturn. Uh, mm -hmm. After that, it's getting a bit tricky. But the number of um, deep sky objects, there's hundreds. But um, well, um, Charles Messier. Um, discovered 110. Uh, oh, sorry, about 100. And others have been added to his catalogue later. Right. And there's lots more out there. That's right. So, uh, so okay. Uh, but I kind of agree with Adam in one sense that these, um, th these, uh, the planets. I love being the person who sets up a telescope and hide look at that it's amazing those are the you can see the actual rings and it looks just like they see in the picture books right that's that and that's uh, another point that i want to caution you against don't expect when you look through the eyepiece for a very first time that you're going to see those those things you see from the hubble space telescope web, web page or or keck observatory or any of that stuff those are images that were painstakingly put together with a lot of complicated equipment you're not going to see that. You're going to see tiny dots. You're going to see smudges of color. And you're going to see little tiny bands around planets. I mean, that's about it. Am I right, guys? Yep. 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 And if you look at deep, deep sky objects, you're not even going to see color. It's just going to be little gray well, you smudges. Can, you can see green a little bit in Orion sometimes. You can see some greenish hue. Uh, but it has to be pretty dark. See that? <laughs> yeah. All right. Okay. So uh, my, our guest today is uh helen reed and she is um from she is a, an amateur astronomer from the united states and she has recently purchased her very first telescope and so helen i wonder if you could tell us a little bit about your story what your challenges were what your thought processes were and what you finally decided on yeah, so it's technically my second telescope because I also had a little one that was given to me when I was a kid that was really hard to see anything with, you know, and that was just put away in a box and never really used again because, you know, it was one of those like like uh, Adam and John were talking about. Um, so I started started watching actually the when Fraser Kane was doing the uh, the virtual star parties I started watching those and that's really what got me interested in getting a, um, a you know a, a decent grown up telescope and um, it took me a while to really kind of figure out what to get because it it does seem kind of overwhelming if you just think of all the different kinds of telescopes and you know and, and what are you going to get I think they at one point might have done a hangout talking about first telescopes that that helped a lot um and so what i ended up getting was um a, you know just a very simple telescope that i think is really a, a good beginning telescope um not too expensive simple to use it's it's an eight inch dobsonian um that you just you just you know there's nothing computerized it doesn't need batteries or anything you just wheel it out and you just you just point it at what you want to look at you know and it just you physically grab it by the tube and you turn it or you tilt it until you line up what you're looking at um and i think the first thing i looked at with it with it was um the the moon in the daytime just to figure out how to how to work the thing and that was really cool and then i think my first uh nighttime thing that i saw was was probably probably jupiter 
um, in the Orion Nebula, and that was just super exciting. And it was, you know, it's a very easy telescope to use without spending a ton of money. I mean, you're not going to be like taking like the pictures that you see online, not, not even talking about the Hubble telescope, but people who do real astrophotography where they've got, you know, their motorized mounts and stuff. You're, and, you know, you're not going to see that, um, you know, with the pictures that they do by stacking the images and everything, but super exciting to be able to just, you know, look up at the moon, look up at Jupiter and Saturn and, you know, and, you know, maybe see a galaxy or something. Um, so when you took out your Dobsonian uh, for the first, you said you got an eight inch? Yeah. Uh, and uh, what, what were, did you, were you very familiar with the night sky before you got started? Uh, I mean, you know, reasonably so. I mean, just because I was always interested in science all my life, um, you know, and I've always been someone who always just looks up at the sky with the naked eye and just, oh, you know, what's. Okay. But you know, what, what I like, what, what I like, what I'm hearing from you is that you said, you know, you watched Fraser Kane's uh, Virtual Star Party, which was a great resource yep. for you. It was a great. They did this every Sunday, I think, for a while, where they actually for a while. they yeah. actually did imaging through uh, Hangouts, and yeah. that was one of the first really yeah. innovative uses of these Google Hangouts. And so, yeah, I remember doing. I remember seeing those, yeah. and and that way that helped you get see what other people were using, albeit on an advanced level in some cases. Yeah, yeah, much more advanced. And but it just, it, it, I mean, it really did inspire me to say, oh, hey, look, I should get a telescope you know well, i um, i think that was the perfect choice for a first telescope and i'm going to I'll talk more about why i think that is in a bit but the the uh but you also did something else and that is that you had done some groundwork i mean going to the star party is a lot like what john and adam and i talked about last week which is going to a um going to an astronomy club and just hanging out with people who've been doing this for a long time that will save you so much money folks just doing that one thing if you just go there and see what they've got and as john mentioned last week you might even be able to buy a used one from a, a club member and, and get some good deals so that's so worth doing in so many ways uh and then you know you learn the night sky you had a pretty good understanding you said of that what did you do did yeah. you like read magazines or did you just go up and try to find the constellations yourself how did you become familiar with the night sky um i mean i knew some of the constellations just from being a human being who's interested in science and looks at the <laughs> sky a lot you know some of that i knew there are so many human beings that aren't so <laughs> yeah yeah and and um i did get uh, an app on my phone um the Sky Safari, I think, is the one that I have that will help you to find things in the night sky. Uh -huh. um, th and that that's helpful because you can just kind of point your you point your phone up at the sky and it kind of, you know, pan around and it shows you what, you know, the constellations and it, it, it is helpful for finding things. Well, I just want to point out yeah. that last week we did a hangout. We talked a little bit about apps and I just got a comment from Chris Lindbergh three hours ago on last week's hangout and he says that google does still produce the sky map app that i that we were talking about as well so if you go and he has a link to the play store to download it i liked that app because i thought it was um because i thought it was um uh one of the easiest to use and I could just hold it up and you could see what it was. So these apps are really good. And we're going to do a whole hangout on apps folks, but that's another good way to get intro introduced into the night sky. What, what eyepieces came with your telescope, Helen? Um, it came with two eyepieces. It came with uh, it, it'll take a, a two inch eyepiece, eyepiece or a one and a quarter inch. And so it came with a 28 millimeter, two inch, diameter eyepiece and uh uh one and a quarter inch 10 millimeter so which is you know a little bit higher powered right. but smaller field okay um, do you have a photo you can share helen can yeah you... okay great so let me make you full screen get rid of that <clears throat> yeah so there it is can you guys see that uh no no we're still looking at you still looking at me oh i see okay ah there's me ah there it is okay. yes there it is okay and I, and I see you got it from orion um yeah and it's got a solar filter on front too it's got a solar filter that was the day that was um may of last year i went out for the mercury transit 
um, and so put a solar filter on it. It actually came with this. This scope did come with one of the the cheap film solar filters, which isn't that great. And I I, I got one of the better glass ones later. Yeah, they're not too much more expensive. That's going to be nice for the yeah. eclipse coming up, isn't it? For the eclipse, yeah. Um, and so you can see I've got on it there. I've got the big twenty eight millimeter two inch diameter um, eyepiece on it. Um, I've also got, well, you can see, oh, and here's me freezing. It was a freezing cold day, despite being May, and I was just freezing. And you can see the buds coming out on the trees, and I'm in my winter coat. But, uh, <laughs> That's all part of it, folks. Get ready to get yeah, your, get your warmies is. on. It get is. your warmies on. <laughs> yeah, and so here it is with the with a smaller one and a quarter inch um, eyepiece on. With I have this adapter so that you can um, attach your smartphone so that you can take photos right through the eyepiece um that is really cool so took, yeah how, how does that work yeah. does that work okay do you like that that accessory yeah it, it works okay so like here are some pictures i took of the mercury transit um there we go and there there's Mer there. there's mercury there's mercury and some sunspots not very well, um, but yeah that's good that's yeah really, that's you know really so nice. Yeah, um, and I think I've got a picture of Jupiter that I, and the and the Galilean moons that I took that way with uh, just pointing the phone piled in place with with that little adapter. Okay, I don't want to get into too much of the imaging part of it, but I got to ask you, yeah. what exposure time was that? that um, I, I mean, that was just point and shoot with a smartphone. Okay, so whatever one, that one whatever this, you let it auto auto expose. Auto, whatever it did. Okay, yeah. all right. That's good. impressive. That is impressive. Yeah. 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 That's very yeah. nice. Well, that, how much was that uh, adapter you bought? Do you remember? The adapter, I don't remember. Okay. I tried two different ones, and the first one I got really didn't work very well. And then this was the one that they came out with later that works a lot better. That's just easier to connect and it just does what it's supposed to do. Okay. Uh... So. That's really great. That is a yeah. really nice one. So, okay. Um, John, Adam, any comments? Kurt, do we need to explain what a Dobsonian telescope is? Uh, in a bit. I just wanted to see if you had any comments on... Uh, well, um, all right. Let's go ahead and do that. Sure. Um, the kind of telescope... Well, why don't you go ahead, uh, Adam? Why don't you talk? <laughs> <laughs> I've been doing all the talking. <laughs> So a, a Dobson telescope, a Dobson is basically a mount. It's not the actual telescope, the tube. It refers to the type of mount. It's a, a relatively cheap, inexpensive, modern type of mount. Uh, technically, it's an alt azimuth mount. Alt means altitude. You can move the telescope up or across, depending on uh, where you want it relative to the horizon uh nowadays i mean john will tell you there's no such thing as a, a dobsonian telescope and he's right there isn't but a lot of people use the term to refer to inexpensive telescopes where you have a, a light mirror because the mirror doesn't weigh a lot uh it's basically an inexpensive way of uh, mounting a telescope. John, you want to add any comments um, to that? Um, well, no, I mean, um, yeah, Adam said it. Is, to my mind, there's no such thing as a Dobsonian telescope. And to call them Dobsonians, um, really, it just confuses people, especially when they say, oh, all Newtonians need um, collimation. Yeah. said, oh, this isn't a, Dob this isn't, um, a Newtonian, it's a Dobsonian. <laughs> so then we had to, yeah, that, that happened at um, an astronomy club meeting a, a couple of months back, and to tell you the truth, the bloke looked a bit put out when he when we explained to him it's not a Dobsonian, it's a Newtonian. <laughs> so it's a Newtonian telescope, optical tube on a yep. uh, on a Dobsonian mount. And the reason we're talking about Dobsonian mounts, and I would wager that the reason Helen bought one of these is. The reason is very simple. We're going to talk. I want to move now into some of the properties of a good first telescope. And the Dobsonian meets almost all of them. First of all, 
to my mind, and you guys chime in, Adam, and well, all three of you, anybody wants to say anything, by all means, just do it. Um, I think it should not, you should not spend more than $500 on your very first telescope. And the reason I say that is that you don't know yet if you're going to like it. You don't know yet if this is a, a hobby that you're going to want to stick to, that you're going to want to go outside with on a regular basis and make the, the, the purchase of something more expensive worthwhile. Um, these are all things you need to learn yet. And if you spend too much on your very first telescope and then you don't like it, then it just leaves a bad taste in your mouth. You end up hating amateur astronomy. You talk crap about telescopes. But if you just spend what you can what you can afford and there's in the range on that as, as i'll show you with this particular website that i've been showing you it's not that bad 250 to 500 dollars will buy you an outstanding first telescope that you will use for years to come now what do you guys think of that statement John? i agree Tony. yeah yeah helen yeah. yeah would you yeah would you agree with that also yeah absolutely Okay, so cheap. It should be less than $500, and Dobsonians meet the bill. But it should have great, as good of optics as you can afford for that amount. And again, Dobsonians tend to meet the bill. Why? Because they're mounted on a Newtonian design reflector telescope. That means they've got mirrors. It is easier and cheaper to make a high-quality mirror than it is to make a high-quality lens that is big. And so mirrors tend to be a heck of a lot cheaper. You only have to worry about one surface of the mirror being pristine where on the piece of glass. Where in a reflect or refractor, it all has to. And we're going to talk about that next time. But, um, but in, in the case of a Dobsonian reflector telescope, you can get excellent quality optics for a reasonable price. I mean, um, uh, this, I, I don't know. And, and John and, and Adam, you tell me what you guys use in the UK. I have been, I have been showing this website which is telescope.com. Now, I trust them. I, I've bought things from them before, and their prices are very well, uh, very, um, uh, you know, reasonable. Here is an example. Let me just get this up. Um, you, I mean, I'm showing you things. Right now, they've got a 8-inch telescope for $475, a 12-inch for $1,200. Um, but you can get, I mean, there's, there's a... Um, a six inch uh, for only two sixty nine, an eight inch for four ninety nine. So these are all upper. These, these are the. You know, there's a four and a half inch telescope for two thirty nine. These are all very reasonable and they're a re really good quality. That's what Helen bought. Helen bought one of these, right, Helen? Yeah. Right. Yeah, I got one of those. Right, and so I go ahead. And so go ahead, Adam. I, I kind of see Dobsonian telescopes type telescopes as the equivalent of a, a point and click camera they're very easy to set up very easy to use yes and that brings us to the i think the second quality of a good telescope which is it has to be easy to use one look and you need to know how to use it right guys i mean you don't want to spend a lot of time with a complicated yeah. thing you've never used before it just gets too frustrating um so then again, and Dobsonians meet that bill. They were designed to be simple to use by John Dobson. And so um, I, that's the second property. It needs to be easy to use. John, any comment? And I am, well, in, in astronomy, um, when, you, uh, when you're talking telescopes, aperture is king. Okay, what do you mean, by, what do you mean, what do you mean by aperture? The, um, the size of the... Um, front lens or the mirror on a newtonian reflector right so that would be the third property of a good <laughs> beginning telescope you want to get as much aperture as you can afford and that's right yeah. uh, for five hundred dollars i think you can get up to about an eight inch reasonably well would you agree john yeah and well, i don't know the places in um in, in america well okay let's talk about the uk because we have people watching in the uk give us a a good source for where where you would buy something I'm just trying to bring up, is it screen share? So uh, while he's getting that up, let me just say that from the UK. Well, um, I'll just. Uh... So I, I use telescope.com. That's Orion Telescopes. That's a good. Astronomics is another good one. They're in Texas, I think. I'm just trying to bring up, is it screen share? 
So uh, while he's getting that up, let me just say that the the aperture of a telescope, you want it to be as big as possible because you want it to collect as much light as possible. The the bigger the mirror, the brighter the image is going to be in the eyepiece. Now, Helen, Helen bought a telescope that had a two-inch eyepiece, and it came with it. Eyepieces are the things that you actually look through and you focus. Those come in generally two sizes in the U.S., inch and a quarter and two-inch. A two-inch eyepiece are generally much, much more expensive. They're... They're like a miniature refracting telescope, actually. So uh, they can be quite expensive, but and we'll have a whole we'll have a whole hangout on eyepieces. But but the ones that come with it, generally with these scopes, are plenty to get started with. You don't got to worry about eyepieces. What was the size of the ones that you had again, Helen? Were they you said twenty millimeter, and what was the other? So so it was a the two inch one. I think is twenty eight millimeter, and it came with a one and a quarter inch uh, that's ten millimeter. Okay, now that those millimeters and eyepieces will relate to magnification, and the way that you tell what magnification you're operating at is you divide that number twenty eight millimeters in the case of one of her eyepieces into the focal length of the telescope in millimeters, and that'll tell you the app the magnification. Um, so if it's a two hundred millimeter focal length telescope with a 20 millimeter eyepiece that's a that's a power of 10 um magnification that's just because i could do that in my head <laughs> um okay um so uh so john are you looking up something yeah i'm i'm trying to um link to uh i to tell um, a couple of telescope shops okay well, I'm going to read some comments here. Uh, Galaxia goes, my first telescope, I won in a contest. Cheaper is impossible. Okay, you win. You win, Galaxia. Nobody, <laughs> nobody's going to do better than that. Um, let's see. Uh, I, uh, JB, I just bought a 10-inch Newtonian for 100 bucks. Have not regretted it. Just saying the deals are out there, folks. And that is a good point. Uh, Craigslist, uh, Gumtree, um, all kinds of places like that can li will list. You can get used stuff quite a bit. I sold a lot of my telescopes, all of my telescopes except for a few, on Craigslist too. Um, so those <coughs> are those are um, those are you can get good. Cloudy deals skies. What? Is another good uh, cloudy skies is a second-hand telescope website. It's pretty good. Ah, good. Okay, in the in the UK. No, I think it's... Oh, uh, is it everywhere? Or... Oh, okay. All right, that's cool. Cl cloudy... Is it cloudy nights? Or cloudy skies? Something like that. <laughs> it might be cloudy nights. I like to yeah, check. I think I'll it might check. be cloudy night or cloudy nights, something like that. Yeah. I will check. Yeah, so there are deals. And again, as John mentioned last week, you might want to go look in uh, at your... Just by hanging out with the local amateur astronomers, they might have some deals as well. Uh, Susan Hunter is commenting, Edmund Scientific Red Scope is easy for aiming via your lap and wide field of view is especially uh, suited for children and I think they are still made. We talked about them last week. That was one of my few telescopes. I have mine over here on the floor. Uh, they don't make them anymore, um, but uh, somebody commented that there is a Kickstarter available for the guy who did invent them. They're called Edmund Astroscans and they're four inch telescopes. And um, they're really, they are easy to use, and you can just hold them in your lap. That is, that is good. Can a smart, uh, Alexander Reinders is, is commenting, can the smart bo smartphone cams be astro modified? Well, I think we just saw they could. Um, so, uh, tell, Helen, what, what about that? Do you use that a lot, that little adapter you bought? Yeah, I do, I, I do use that to, I mean, to um, take pictures. I mean, you're not going to get deep sky objects that way but it certainly will get you you know pictures of the the moon and the sun and you know like saturn and jupiter that way okay uh larry keese is commenting my son and i have a 12 inch mead smith cassegrain called richie creighton uh mead got sued and changed the name um but a smith cassegrain is not the same as a richie creighton telescope design is it um, either way, I, I, it is, I can see it being a proprietary name, but Schmidt Cassegrains are a very expensive scope and they're very nice. 12 inch ones. That's a nice one, Larry. So that's, that would, those tend to run in the $5,000 ranges usually depending on the, the brand, uh, and the coatings you get. Um, Escano Vitale, my first and so far and only so far telescope was a very old brass one. My father inherited from his grandfather. Wow. Uh, and I stepped into the Science Museum in New York in 1988. I saw it center stage in a window. Yeah, those brass telescopes are nice. They're very. They're also very decorative, 
and if you get them uh, protected with uh, what do you call it those um, those uh, if you protect the brass with a spray uh, polyurethane spray over it it won't it won't tarnish either um, Larry Keith goes I have used SkyMap for a long time that's a good app that's good uh, Scar Star Parties are the best test site for what you want to buy that's true if you have if you're lucky enough to have any uh, Star Parties near where you live go to them that will give you a chance to view through a lot of them uh, Helen are there any near nearby you in, in Vermont um <laughs> I think there is a, a an astronomy club. I have not connected with them at all. Okay, yeah. But uh, I think there is uh, one in the area. What about you, Adam? Adam and John, is there other stuff out there that you can go to in the UK? Star parties? Yeah, yeah, sure. There are lots of astronomy <coughs> clubs and events in the UK. Uh, there are some of them are advertised in places like Sky and Telescope magazine. Yeah, uh, that's true. You can find. You can find your local astronomy club very easily online. I found mine simply by, you know, typing Cleforts Astronomy, which is where I live, and up it came. Okay. Uh, George Caldwell. Hi, George. It's good to see you again. Um, uh, the uh, uh, My first cheap Celestron reflector, uh, was, which on its own wasn't amazing, amazing with the lenses it came with, but once... I was able to get some good lenses and filters. It did the, a great job. Yeah, um, they're not really lenses as much as they are eyepieces, which there's, and there's a difference, which is the only reason I bring up that distinction. But the uh, the eyepieces that come with certain telescopes, but I'm surprised the ones with your Celestron weren't very good. Usually they come with a, a plossel or some kind of uh, eyepiece like that. Usually they're quite good, a 26 millimeter. Ho Muffin is over on Twitch. Um, Grab and go, I think, is the play for beginners. We grossly underrate ergonomics. That's right. It has to be easy to... Oh, and that would be thing number four. Are we on the fourth property? It needs to yeah. be easy uh, to set up. Set up and not so heavy, right? Would you agree, Adam? We don't want to be lugging out an 80-pound telescope every time we want to use it for the first time. John mentioned aperture. Uh, it's a kind of trade-off between a bit... Everyone wants a big aperture telescope that will give you a good view of very dim, distant objects. Well, big aperture telescopes are heavy. So you, you need to think about the trade-off between setting up and using a telescope and what you're going to see through it. It's a compromise sometimes. It really is. It always comes down to it. It's, you're always trading off. You're never going to have the perfect all-around experience with every single object that you can think of whether it be planets or or excuse me or um or uh, uh deep sky objects or whatever so just one more comment the only the only thing a home muffin's commenting twice i want to just read these the only thing with dobbs is if you're in an urban environment finding stuff can be tricky also collimation scares a lot of people okay two things there it, you light pollution not much you can do about that except go to dark skies, right, guys? <clears throat> yeah, that well, light pollution yeah. is a killer. Yeah, it really is. What are things like in Vermont? You guys have pretty good uh, light skies up there. It's well, I mean, I'm out in a fairly rural area, so it's not it's not too bad. Um, you know, Some it just people, it depends where uh, you are. I've heard people complain that it's difficult to look straight up using a, a Dobsonian mount. Yeah, is they it, can, they can it? be a little bit weird um, because you're just rotating around <laughs> the the turntable essentially yeah. that way. So the pole or, or the zenith, which is what that's called, the spot directly above your head, uh, is a, can be difficult. But most of the interesting things are off a little bit off site anyway, so it's not that big of a deal. And then finally, uh, he wants uh, Home Muffin wants to give a special shout out to the Astronomers Without Borders One Sky. It is one of the great bargains available. Do you guys uh, have any comment on that? Adam's got astronomers. <laughs> astronomers without borders is an awesome organization. Yeah. I'm what what do they do? Do you, what? I, I'm not totally familiar with what they do. They promote astronomy around the world without uh, the borders, the artificial borders we create on maps that signify countries. Good. And they have a one sky telescope, which apparently is is good. So there's one recommendation for that. I've not used it, so I can't. I can't back up. Oh, uh, okay, so uh, I can't back it up, but I, I'm, I'm, I have no reason to think otherwise. Um, so, John, do you have any uh, any recommendations for us for UK uh, places to get telescopes? 
Um, yes, I was trying to bring up um, a place earlier, um, but for some reason, um, you can't the screen share won't let me. Oh, okay. But it will now. Oh. So I'll just uh, bring this one up. Can you see that one? We don't. We just see... Bl oh, there it goes. Harrison Telescopes. Ah, yeah. good. I, I, okay. bought, I bought from these a few times. Okay. Um, and they're very good. And as you can see, telescopes for beginners. Ah, very nice. And what do they show there? Well, telescopes under 150 pounds. Uh, and telescopes click on over that one. Click on that one. What's on over 150 pounds? Oh, let's do under 150 pounds. That's fine. Oh, look, there's a very right. Astro Scan y looking thing. Skywatcher Infinity. I like that. That's only 45 <laughs> pounds. Okay. Uh, Skywatchers. First Scope 76. What do you get? Have you guys used those? I've. Um, no. Um, I've not used one. Yeah, I've not got one. And really, really they, they're too small. Yeah. Those are 60 millimeter, um, refra 60 millimeter refractors. They'd be very good for looking at planets, but not much else. Very bright. Yeah, very planets bright and the moon. And yeah. Um, 60 millimeter, too small, really. Yeah. There's that Celestron travel scope. I've got that one, a very good scope, 70 quid. If it comes with a bag, um, all telescopes come with eyepieces. And um, in this case, a tripod. That's okay. important as well. You need a tripod for some some way of... Uh... Yeah, usually it comes with it. If, it's, if you're not getting the Dobsonian, they usually come with some kind of tripod, although... I can't vouch for the uh, quality of it, for sure. Um, okay, well, so that's a good resource there. I, I just want to point out, guys, when we talk about places to buy and brands to buy, we're not getting any money for this, okay? There's no affiliate links, at least not yet. <laughs> I'm not going to promise you I won't do it at some point. But right now, there's you know we're just talking about where we buy scopes and where we get them from. And, um, and uh, we are... Uh, not making any money on it, so I just wanted to make make sure of that. Um, Home Muffin is 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 back on Twitch saying that um, the uh, One Sky is about two hundred bucks. No, they said they have a, a scope of five inch f five in the UK, a Heritage one thirty for about two hundred bucks. The spiritual successor to the Astro Scan. I think we just saw that on the uh, or something similar on John's on John's website. So um, what do you have up now, John? What is this? Uh, this is um, a company called First Light Optics. Again, I've bought, bought from them. Very good um, company. This is this one. It's um, a 19 millimeter um, altazimuth mounted telescope. So the lens at the front is 19 millimeters. Ah, okay. And comes with the, the uh, mount again. Very simple mount, and just under um, 150 quid. Ah, good. Okay, that's a, that's a very nice telescope. Okay. All right, nope. well, well, good. I want to read some more comments, uh, but before I do, I just want to review. I, under $500 and whatever the UK equivalent of that is in pounds, please don't spend more than that on your first scope. It needs to be one look at it, and you need to be able to understand how it works. Dobsonians are the prime choice for that because they are so simple to use. They don't have a lot of expensive motorized mounts that you have to align and everything else uh, with, 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 the, with the rotation of the stars because that's what mounts are designed to do is to counteract the rotation of the Earth. You want something that is uh, as big as aperture as you can afford for five hundred dollars, and for most observer for most telescopes, that means about an eight inch reflector. Uh, and the reason you want a large primary mirror is because of the light gathering ability. You want to gather as many photons as you can. Um, you don't care about magnification for this telescope. You don't. You're never going to be, believe it or not, with the Dobsonian, say, F6 telescope. You're not going to be doing more than 30, maybe 50 power. So this is not a high magnification thing. Nor do you want it to be high magnification. Why? Because you want to see more of the sky. High magnification means you see a tiny, tiny, tiny part of the sky. So which is easier, looking at the sky and trying to find something looking through a straw or if you or looking through a barrel to try to find something in the night sky? Which is easier? It's that second one. And, and finally, you want it to be lightweight and easy to set up. You want to be able to just grab it and then set up outside your driveway. Helen, how long does it take you when you decide you want to go observing to actually be outside observing. How long do you think it takes you? 
10 minutes. Right. Maybe less. And you're Maybe more, less. And, and you're more likely, aren't you, to go outside yeah. when it's easy. Yeah. Right? I yeah. can't. I don't yeah. know about you, John, but when I think about going outside and I've got this huge, uh, I've got to worry about lugging a 70 pound Schmidt Cassegrain outside and uh, polar aligning it, getting all of my cameras connected, and maybe two hours later I'm observing. Um, I'm more inclined to just go, you know what? I'm going to stay inside and watch TV. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Especially if it's cold out. If it's cold out, I really got to be talked into it. But unfortunately, the uh, the cold nights are also the best observing nights. So yeah. for reasons we will talk mm -hmm. about uh, in future Hangouts. Uh, you guys have anything you want to add to the properties of a good first telescope that we might have missed? Um, well, it's where to buy it from. Well, like, we've all, well yeah, we've talked about where to buy well, it from. Yeah, where to yeah. not buy it from. Supermarkets, um, chain, so chain stores, um, catalog stores. Go to a proper um, optical store. Okay. One, that's, one that sells telescopes and binoculars. And also, I, can, I don't know if you can um, see this. It's a... Thank you, yes. A monocular. Oh, a monocular, yes. That's a half a binocular. That's right. Okay, good. Um, this, this one is um, 15 by 50. And unlike a set of, of um, 15 times... Um, binoculars this one is easy to hold okay and that that, that i'm glad you brought up binoculars because we can't we can't neglect those um so you have a binocular you said it was it was 15 by what was it again 15 by 50 15 by 50 that second number is the diameter in millimeters of the objective of the lens so, and yeah. the 15 was the power at, that it operates um so binoculars what about those guys do you guys have any Anybody? I'll oh, yes. Three of you. What do you have, John? And why? Um, Besides your binoculars. So, yes. <laughs> well, I've got um, 7x50 and 10x50, because they're nicely to, nice to um, handhold and show a good area of um, the sky. Um, they're great for um, meteor spotting. Um, then I've got some... Um, 15 by 70s, so 15 times magnification, 70 mil um, front lenses. Um, I bought them because they were cheap and, uh, um, well, not with just, oh, no, no, I bought, sorry, I bought them by, brand new. But they were inexpensive and it gives, it gives me something a bit stronger than the, the, a pair of 7 or 10s for doing um, stargazing. <coughs> I've also got some uh, 20 by 80s. I bought those because um, they were going cheaper to um, a local uh, now, astronomy club. Now those, I, I'm of the opinion, I have a hell of a time holding up binoculars with my hands. Anything more than, say, 10 power. Yeah, the, the 15s and the 20s, um, they go on a tripod. Okay, so you the, you really need to. That's a good. That's a good. That's a good point. So if you do buy binoculars, it's anything over 10 pounds or 10 power. Uh, you're going to need to mount it on something because your arms get too tired and you start shaking too much at 10 magnification, which is a, the real. That's the real bane of magnification, folks. It's mag. It's it's vibration. If you if you you know. The higher the magnification you go, the more everything else is magnified. The atmosphere is magnified. The vibrations are magnified. Everything is magnified. So you really want to keep it as low power as possible. I like these. I like these uh, Celeste, these 20 by 80s that you were talking about, John. Let me just share my screen real quick if I can. Um, do There we go. I like these. Um, these are relatively inexpensive. I'm seeing these again on... Oh, we don't want to chat. <laughs> Let me get rid of that. Um, okay, so these Skymaster 20 by 80s, I really like. They're like 140 bucks, and um, I like these a lot. These uh, these uh, 100s are even better, uh, but they're 320 bucks. Um, again, the the 80 number is the aperture of each of the lenses, and the and the 20 is the magnification. I I I like these, but you've got to have a tripod with them uh, to go all you know to use them at all. 
and um, or, um, go ahead. People have a power. People have a parallelogram mount that allows you to uh, move binoculars around like a telescope. I have seen those. Yeah, that, that, very good. You're not going to believe what just happened. Look at this. You see my dog? <laughs> he just jumped on my on my desk. Come here, come here, come here, get down, get down. <laughs> Somebody just came to my house to work on it, and he's very interested in what they're doing. You stay. You stay down there. <laughs> okay. So, um, yes. So, I really like these binoculars, but as they said, so they're these parallel. You know, we should have a, a hangout on those mounts also, the different kinds of mounts that you can get for binoculars. Um, but binoculars... <sighs> As a first telescope, what do you guys think? They have the, they have a lot of the properties of our of our best first telescope. They're under five hundred dollars. They're easy to pick up and use and go outside, but they don't have the aperture. That's what I don't like about binoculars. No, you, what do you guys think? You they don't have the uh, magnification either, and you don't no, have you, the magnification. Yeah, so I don't know what you guys. You you can't really see deep sky objects with binoculars they, they're great for looking at the international space station looking at the moon uh, and just uh, and using as a for finders if you have a telescope binoculars you can use to find stars to, to help you point your telescope but, okay uh, that they can't they can't compare to a telescope really yeah i yeah so i don't know i mean yes yeah. you should get those if you can get a good deal on a on a light bridge or on a uh, Orion uh, Dobsonian, let's say you pay three fifty for it or something, and you maybe get a pair of binoculars to keep you under the five hundred dollar limit. Uh, go ahead and do that; it'd be good. But uh, um, uh, but you know that I, I guess I'm going to stick with the Dobsonian, the eight inch. I think a, a good eight inch telescope, whether it's a Dobsonian or a uh, Newtonian mount, as long as it's under five hundred bucks, I'm going to stick to that because I really think. You don't want to spend too much for that. Um, so Raptor, oh, so Raptor 712 was commenting. We have a 25 by 70 Sky Master, but they need to be used on a tripod as well. Yes, good point. Okay, John, do you want to say something? And then I want Helen yeah. to talk. Yeah, um, my um, telescope, the um, the 200 mil, um, and it's not going to let me share again. Never mind. 200 mil or 8 inch um, Newtonian. I'm going to be building a Dobsonian mount for that, just so I can take it out and plunk it on the ground and do some observing. Ah, okay. That's a good idea. Um, Alexander Rangers is commenting, Tony, you don't have to buy new. That's correct. You don't. We have, we've talked about that earlier. Well, you, yeah. you definitely buy used. Uh, somebody was saying they got a, an 8-inch telescope for 100 bucks. So, yes, you can definitely buy used ones out there as well. And uh, uh, David Leapard is saying has got a good point. If you find astronomy is not your bag, a binocular is easier to sell than a telescope. That's true. Most people know what to do with binoculars, although the 20 by 70 is maybe difficult. You can always take up bird watching with binoculars. That's right. Exactly. Uh, and, Su and Susan Hunter, somewhere on the internet, are plans for a monopole, a.k.a. A selfie stick, for a ball mount for, binoc for binoculars and the use of strong camera tripod for easy views from your recliner. So there's lots of cool things you can do. Uh, Helen, I want to I leave this hangout with, some, uh, with, with your comments. Do you, what would you say to somebody who's looking to buy their very first telescope? Um, well, I think everything that you've been talking about and the, and the, you know, the one that I got, I've, I've been very happy with it. You know, it was simple to, there was a little bit of assembly when it came, but not too bad. I mean, I had it put together pretty quickly and, and, you know, was able to take it out. And like you say, you know, immediately how to use it. You just, you, you know, it is like a point and shoot equivalent. Um, so, okay. Yeah. I mean, All right. And uh, do you have any plans to upgrade your uh, repertoire or your, your inventory? <laughs> Not in the immediate future. I, I've, I've gotten some accessories. I may have spent more on accessories than the telescope. I mean, I got the adapter. I've gotten two different adapters because the first one didn't really work well, for, you know, for the phone mount. I've gotten some extra eyepieces. I got, uh, oh, I got a cover to put over the telescope, you know, and all that stuff adds up. Yeah, uh, that's true. 
All right. Well, good for you. All right. Well, um, I just want to, so we're, we're out of time. I'm going to have to put an end to this. I want to remind everybody that next week uh, is, is the July 4th holiday here. I will not be available, so we're not going to have a hangout next week. We're going to be meeting again in two weeks where we will discuss the difference between reflectors and refractors. What's the difference? What can you see with each one? And what's so great about one over the other? And why do you got to choose? Why, do you, why can't you just, why isn't one telescope going to fit all? So uh, anyway, that'll be next week. So Adam, uh, I just want, uh, and then John, would you got any, any, any final words you want to say? Uh, uh, go on, John. Oh, go, no, go on, Adam. <laughs> <laughs> I was just going to uh, reiterate what you said about aperture, ease of setup, and what, what do you want? To look at you know if you're happy just to look at the moon and the planets go for a reasonably small cheap telescope if you want deep sky objects you don't have to pay that much more money but generally there's a relationship with telescopes between price and quality the more you pay the better the optics so it depends how seriously you plan on on getting into it and using it as well. Think about how much opportunity you're going to have to go outside and use it. Because, you know, it, it can be a serious investment and I, I wouldn't want anyone to waste their time spending a few hundred dollars or pounds on a piece of equipment that they're simply not going to use. Having said that, telescopes are fantastic. You know, you can go out and see objects that are millions of light years away across the universe it's a fantastic hobby yeah. one i can recommend yeah. to anyone anything to add john oh no i think um adam's pretty much pretty much said it. it's a fascinating hobby and don't forget you're not just looking um at far distant objects you're looking far in the past as well that's right or because it takes light yeah. a certain amount of time to reach us. Well, the further, the, uh, the farther something has traveled, the further back in time uh, you're also looking. So that's a good point. All right. Well, we will leave it there. Uh, I want to remind uh, and I want to just say that. Uh, uh, um, oh boy. I, oh. Okay. Well, I, I lost the comment I was going to make. So anyway, uh, thank you guys for the great hang. I want to thank you very much. Next week, we're going to be talking about our next the week after next. We'll be talking about refractors versus reflectors. We've got a lot of good hangouts coming up in the future. We're going to talk about telescope mounts. We're going to go into imaging, the best eyepieces. What's so great about the, the different kinds of eyepiece designs? How much should you spend? But the old adage goes that the, what is the best first telescope you should buy? It's the And, and it's, it's a cliche, but it's true. It's the one that gets you. And all of those properties that we outlined in this hangout will ensure that if you buy one that meets all of those criteria, you will use it. And that's what we want you to do is to get outside, go into your back backyard on a clear, dark night and keep looking up. Thank you guys looking for watching. Up. We'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye. Bye, everyone. Bye. -bye. Bye, -bye. Bye, -bye.